Let's talk about Hosni Mubarak. Egypt's former leader was 91 when he died, a hero to some, a despot to others. He was president of Egypt for almost 30 years, but his departure was far from the end of Egypt's problems. So who was the man some called a modern day pharaoh? Thirty years is a long time in power, but Hosni Mubarak's rise to power was pretty quick. He was a career military officer who once flew Spitfires and rose through the ranks to become commander of the Air Force and later deputy minister of defense. In 1973, Mubarak helped take back part of the Sinai Peninsula that Egypt had lost to Israel. Mubarak, the hero, became vice president two years later. In 1981, he was beside President Anwar Sadat when he was assassinated. Mubarak took his place and wasted no time in asserting his presidential authority. As soon as uh, Hosni Mubarak takes power and assumes the presidency from the murdered Anwar Sadat, um, he issues an emergency law. And that emergency law essentially grants the Egyptian police and the military the ability to intervene um, with any perceived security threat in society. Those measures gave the Egyptian state sweeping powers to arrest people, curb freedoms of speech, the right to protest, and crack down on the opposition, including the Muslim Brotherhood. And those emergency laws stayed in place throughout his presidency. So there's something to be said about the fact that, that he normalized the idea of police abuse and the uh, establishment of emergency military courts. On the world stage, Mubarak had powerful friends, the United States in particular. The Americans needed Egypt. Under Mubarak, the US was able to secure a steady flow of oil from the Middle East to world markets. Mubarak also helped broker talks between the Palestinians and the Israelis. When Iraq invaded Kuwait in 1990, Egypt joined the US coalition in the Gulf War and it paid off big time. And Egypt at that point is rewarded with a massive wiping of its debt. Egypt had you know, tens of billions of dollars of international debt. Essentially, Mubarak presented himself as a broker of peace and stability in the Middle East, but not everyone bought it. At home, dissatisfaction with his hardline approach only grew. Any economic prosperity there was in Egypt didn't reach everyone, and he was accused of electoral fraud. But that didn't stop Mubarak from being re-elected four times. He also survived assassination attempts on his life. So in 2011, when the Arab Spring protests began, there weren't too many people surprised to see Hosni Mubarak swept up in them too. The death of a street vendor in Tunisia kicked off the protests in December 2010 and inspired millions of people across Egypt. People from all walks of life gathered in Tahrir Square in Cairo, demanding Mubarak step down. Things got ugly. Security forces moved in, but protesters defied curfews and fought back. After 18 days of protests, Mubarak finally let go. Hosni Mubarak has gone. But it cost the lives of around 800 Egyptians. After Mubarak was gone, the country held what were seen as the first free and fair elections. In a close vote, people elected Mohamed Morsi from the Muslim Brotherhood, a political group that Mubarak had once outlawed. Morsi promised to change things. He barely lasted a year. A weak economy and resistance from Mubarak's old guard undercut his authority. And then Egypt's military moved in. Morsi was removed, thrown in jail, and replaced by a military general who remains in power today, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. There's a sense, at least, that the Mubarak legacy very much gave birth to a far, far more aggressively oppressive military state that comes to power under Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. Of course, as part of that military establishment that, that exists under Mubarak's rule. While all this was going on, Hosni Mubarak was behind bars too. He was facing charges of corruption, abuse of power, and complicity in the killing of hundreds of protesters during the Arab Spring. He was eventually acquitted. But during his many court appearances, you could see his health was getting worse. It was a very different image of Mubarak. 
not the strong man he presented himself as while president. In that time, Mubarak wasn't the only one to go. A generation of autocratic leaders were overthrown, leaving behind power vacuums and opening up new regional rifts. For example, once Mubarak was gone, Qatar backed Mohamed Morsi, but Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain supported Egypt's military after the coup. Any of the kind of civil conflicts that we've seen, whether what we're seeing taking place in Libya, in Yemen, in Syria, and all of these different countries, um, in which there is this kind of confrontation between two very distinct types of forces, one that is that gives far more weight to the aspirations of the majority of people versus one that is basically the politics of old. To some Egyptians, Mubarak's removal brought hope and the promise of change. But for others, the end of his 30 years in power brought chaos and put another strong man in charge. Mubarak may have gone, but his hardline legacy lives on. If there's a story or a topic you want to get your head around, get in touch with us on Twitter or Facebook. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss our next episode. I'll see you next week.